All right, so we have Checkmate Flips. He does eBay to Amazon, sold tons of products on Amazon online. He's making a profit off of it, making a full-time living doing this from just your house, right? Yes, sir. And inspired by one of your recent videos, um, I really like the concept of like actually showing your bars. Like this is not this is not a joke. This is for real. I'm not editing this. Okay. What? That's not photoshopped. Come on. It's not photoshopped. Not photoshopped. So, Let's go. 961k in the last 12 months. We're probably gonna get my seven figures. It's really hard adjusting it like this, but uh, I know, right? And then you can oh, hit. Gosh. Oh yeah, yeah you don't want to show that part. You don't want to show... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna show all my products, but uh, okay, this is year to date. Gosh, it doesn't year to date. Yeah. 353k, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, Cody, Cody flexes the bars much harder than I do, but oh no, I, but Seth's but Seth's margins are like double what mine are. <laughs> Yeah, but you probably do like close to double the sales too, though. So it's like, well, we're both making money. We're both make. It's not a competition. We're both yes, making sir. money. Everybody can make money on here, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of go right into it. If somebody's watching this, they're probably watching it because they're an Amazon seller, and we just like to keep it real here. Just getting right into it before before we were talking about how you know Seth's making really good money with Amazon. But really, if you've been an Amazon seller for a while, you probably realize that, hey, having my entire income in the grasp of just Amazon, where they could ban you at any point in time, take all of your inventory and really pretty much shut down your business just like that. We're going to get into for Amazon sellers that have been selling for a while, but want to get into something else, right? Or want to start diversifying a little bit, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, um, so Seth, I, what have you been doing to diversify your business a little bit? Can well, I just I just want to lay out a really blunt metaphor for what Amazon is sometimes. Um, <laughs> Amazon's a great way to make money. It's amazing that they have their marketing dialed in. Like they are the place to go to sell products. Um, you can thrift, you can sell books online. That's probably the easiest way to get started. You can do retail arbitrage, which is buying from stores. You can do online arbitrage, buying from online sites, selling on Amazon. You can do wholesale. You can make your own product. Um, they're amazing for that. There's so many opportunities, but when you sign up, you basically, uh, it's in their terms of service that so they can just suspend you and they can hold your inventory and your payout. Um, and so it's an inventory based business and lots of money is invested if you're actually doing this at a higher level. Um, so yeah, sometimes I like to think of Amazon as like, they're the really attractive girlfriend that is low key abusive that you're just like, I'm going to stay with this person until I find a better option. Uh, it's, it's a good time and all, but we're, we're trying to find something else sometimes. too. I, I love that analogy so much. And I think the thing is with that, I guess kind of like adding on to that, Seth, because like I yeah. saw you comment that before. And then I'm like, uh, I like told that to somebody else. I'm like, bro, that's so funny. I was like, I was like, Seth made that up. I'm not taking credit for that, <laughs> right? Um, but I think it's this thing, and we'll kind of get into it, where it's that. It's basically like, it's kind of like that abusive girlfriend you stay with. That's pretty much what Amazon is. But, right? But, um there's other options, right? I think that's the thing is like, I guess I don't really go out to bars and stuff, but like <laughs> say, say, you know, you got this girlfriend that was at your local bar and there was only like one person. Let's say there was one person, right? Um, I, hold, I'm getting there, right? Yeah. With, yeah. with online and, and business. Yeah, I, have, I have a little note to add uh, before you, before we go <laughs> any what? further, guys, I don't advise staying with an abusive girlfriend. <laughs> if that's the case, but when it comes to making money, you need to make some money. So Cody, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. But basically I'm saying like, you have other options, right? There's another bar down the street. You know, there's all the, you can meet people at, uh, if you go to the oh, library, what was that? You can go to the library. Right. Exactly. There's all <laughs> sorts of different options, right? <laughs> the library. And, 
a lot of us have dabbled in just Amazon, or maybe you know we tried another business, didn't really work out. Then eventually found Amazon, and Amazon. Uh, hopefully, we can agree, Seth. Like the skill barrier for Amazon, like say from zero to ten, it's like a three or four, right? You don't have to be the smartest, the most amazing person in the world to make a ton of money selling on Amazon. Like you, you agree with that? Yeah, and it's like two point three if you do books. <laughs> right yeah so yeah you're saying the 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 level to entry is not that high when it comes to amazon but it's a good way to actually get started with making money on your own terms slash building business skills correct like the barrier to entry is probably one of the lowest ones out of a lot of businesses and then the next part is they do pretty much everything for you so like you don't have to market you don't have to make your own product you just sell other people's products so just like the skill of even selling isn't that like <laughs> so really you feel this way too it's like as a seller we like to think that like we're super smart and this and that and all this stuff but oh, i really man. realized it's like we're just in a very good opportunity vehicle you know when it comes to marketing they have their marketing dialed in i don't know anything about marketing I literally just like look at the keep it graphs and I'm like, this product sells. Like I know how to understand demand. I don't create demand. You don't create demand. Like we just sell products with demand. Correct. That's, that's the big thing we, and that's kind of the selling point with Amazon, right? <laughs> you don't have to make the product. You don't have to create the demand. You don't have to do all this stuff, right? No ads, none of that. I mean, you could run PPC, yeah. but like don't. you don't have to. Yeah, you're right. Honestly, that's on my to-do list. It's been on my to-do list for like six months, and I haven't <laughs> started a PPC campaign for my items. And it's because it you doesn't didn't need to, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the funny part. But yeah, Seth, could you tell us like kind of what you're getting into? I heard before you, you know, you started yeah. getting Walmart. Could you talk about like that and you know? really anything else like outside of Amazon you got going on? Yeah. So basically um, a couple steps I've taken to be less dependent on Amazon over the last year or so is I was completely FBA. Um, so for super beginners, if you don't know, FBA is fulfilled by Amazon. All of your inventory is at Amazon and they fulfill your items for you, which is awesome. Uh, that's a nice way to delegate it out. Um but it's less controlled. They have the items. Um, so I decided to do merch fulfilled, which is all the items are either with me or at a prep center and I'm merch fulfilling the items and I have more control of the inventory and it's a little bit faster cash flow. Cody had been in encouraging me to do MF for like the year before that. And I was like, nah, like I don't do MF, blah, 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 blah. Like I was just very stuck in my ways of FBA. And then I suddenly went gung ho with it. Um, so that was one step. Another step is, um, I opened a Walmart account and it's a very good backup option to Amazon. Um, and it's, it's like, it's something that I opened up. I cross listed stuff that I have multiples of onto Walmart and like, it's honestly selling really well. Um, did you ever get your Walmart account up and running Cody? Yeah. Mine's up and running. I, have been spending the last two nights trying to, I'm trying to find 10 items a night to like list on the Walmart. 10 units or 10? Like 10, 10, like, I don't know what they would call it on Walmart, but on Amazon, it's ASINs on Walmart. It's UPCs, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to list 10 items a night. I haven't sold anything yet, um, but I'm trying to find, basically my goal is to like find really a hundred items, uh, do like a test buy of one. And then list it up, okay. just merch and fulfill on Walmart and see how it goes. I haven't sold anything yet, so we'll see how that goes. The approval process you got in first try, right? I thankfully got in first try. I think it was like your second try or something. You tried like, like I tried a like, year ago. It, it was a total of basically three times. I just think it's interesting that you got in first try and like most people don't. It's just <laughs> because I'm better than you. I'm just kidding. Yeah, he's just, I'm he's just, just kidding. better. Just that's why you gotta regular. No, I, I think there were just different phases of like I think, kind of like Amazon and gating, for example. I think Walmart like a year ago it was harder to get in, and then when I applied it was easier to get in. It, it, I think it's just like phases. 
Yeah, I, I, I think you had perfect timing, and I think you're just better, Seth. So I think <laughs> I think everybody should definitely subscribe to Checkmate Flips. That's all I got to say. After they subscribe to Cody Flips. But anyways, you, yeah, well, okay. you have been listing 10 ASINs a night. Um, yeah, you're going to get sales like pretty quickly here. Um, oh, okay. You probably. think so? I, I feel like you will. But well, it depends on the items, of course, you know. But so there's no keepa <laughs> yeah. that we know of for Walmart, but how are you like gauging demand? Are you just cross listing your Amazon stuff? Or are you just looking like my method is like I see okay, it has one review, that means it's sold. Somebody mm-hmm. bought it and left a review, and then I'm just trying like if it has one review, I'll list it up. It like is do you think that's a good method? Like what do you think, Seth? Because you sold stuff on Walmart. I have a, yeah. Um I generally just base the SEO um, and I use uh, an SEO tool divided by the amount of reviews. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, definitely not doing that. Um, I, I, I just look at the keep a graph and then I'm like, this probably has uh, like 20% of the, the demands on Walmart. I just gauge it like that. Okay. <laughs> It, 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 I, I don't know. There's no like set in stone. I don't know if that's actually the case because I'm sure like for certain listings, it's like 40%. Other listings, it's like 5%. I don't know for sure. Do you think the demand's that mm-hmm. much? Like, let's say you have an item that you've been selling on Amazon that sold 10 times in a month. When you list that onto Walmart, do you think that sells two times, one time, four times a month? Okay, so also we're talking about the entire listing as a whole, not my experience, if that makes sense. This is your experience because that's like – I mean we don't really have any data right now with Walmart, so I'm just kind of like – I'm basically just trying to get a gauge for the Amazon sellers that are like, hey, I'm going to cross-list my inventory. Like what do you think they can expect? Yeah, but the thing is is um, um, I think Cody will get this, and if – if you're newer, like maybe just don't worry about this, but um, like if you let's, let's just take an Amazon item, for example, like let's say the Amazon listing sells a hundred times a month and there's nine sellers and you're going to be number 10, you would expect 10 ish sales a month potentially. Okay. Um, so if it's that listing on Walmart, maybe we expect uh, 20 sales a month, but then if there's three sellers, there's a different ratio there. Do you see that? I see what you're saying because yeah. it, it's a little bit more complicated because the really the competition. Because if there's like 20 sellers on that Walmart listing and it only gets 20 sales a month, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it it kind of matters like how many. I I would I just assume it's 20 percent of the sales and then I would divide it by how many people are on the listing, kind of like usual. Okay. If, if you're if you're new, you don't have to get into that. Like, but I think. I, I, I really appreciate looking at ratios like that. Yeah, so for sure. But then also, ironically, I usually buy one of an item anyways because I do higher ASP stuff from eBay to Amazon. So kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, yeah. Do yeah. You know, Go ahead. That? Go ahead. Do you know if it's against Walmart's terms of service to drop ship? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I never really thought I, I kind of want to like look into that, but uh, I don't know. I don't you know, know, you got your influencer account banned. Do you want to get your Walmart? I got it back. I got, got it back. back. Good. I did get it back. I need to follow up on Instagram about that. I did get it banned, and I guess I'm very lucky. Apparently, I read like on Reddit if you get your Amazon influencer account banned sometimes, and if it's on the same email, which mine was. Sometimes they ban your seller account. <laughs> so That's I'm like, I'm like, man, Walmart looking pretty good right now. <laughs> I um <laughs> in I I I totally think that Walmart is like if you can do full time numbers on Amazon, you could probably also do full time numbers on Walmart. Um, a lot of the items are higher priced. They're going to be slower moving, so you're going to have to buy less quantity probably. But like we said before, like there might have been 20 sellers on the Amazon listing, but there's six sellers on the Walmart listing. So ratio-wise, it works out in a good way. Yeah. 
100 so it's like uh so you think it's a really good opportunity people should make their walmart account today right so or no <laughs> uh you, you can wait until like thursday but no later than no later than that later than um later. the thing is is like i think you should make your walmart account now because i have no proof of this but i'm pretty sure they look at your amazon seller account and so if your amazon seller account is suspended does that look good when you're making your walmart account like I, I think you need to include your, like they ask for a store name when you're making your account on Walmart. Um, so like it's it's a, a glorified backup option, especially if you're merch fulfilling, you could list all of your stuff on Walmart the next day and still have good income like the next day. Yeah. So, so based on the sales that you're seeing so far, do you think somebody could become like a full-time, like just Walmart seller? Cause I think when you like kind of zoom out thinking that like, we're just Amazon sellers is kind of ridiculous. I don't know. Like I thought about that the other day. I'm like, man, like, you know, we sell all this money on just Amazon. Well, while, while there's all of these other po like platforms that everybody's making money on, you got Walmart, you got Poshmark, you got eBay, you got, like Macari, there's people doing uh, whatnot, like just whatnot. And it's like, I think it's kind of ridiculous to assume that like we're just Amazon sellers. I don't know if you feel that way, but. Yeah, but then at the same time, like we're very different from whatnot sellers. Like whatnot sellers <laughs> are just like, yeah, can we have like a loyal following of people who are going to show up to our shows? And like, we don't really list items. We just say like, oh, I got the Casio MS80. <laughs> Who, uh, we got two dollars. We got three dollars. We got oh seven dollars. Oh, cool. <laughs> Throw it in a poly mailer. <laughs> Sell it. Like going uh, to Jared. Going to Jared in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, though, like sometimes, uh, there's pros and cons to all the platforms. Like honestly, sometimes whatnot sounds like the paradise for sorcerers because they you don't have to list you just like you make sure your items are in good condition you have your pile of 30 items here you have a you have a show and you show all your items and bid and then like oh we got an iphone uh 11 mini here and uh we got uh, some headphones and uh cool i made 700 dollars and i bought all this stuff for 40 bucks cool <laughs> i didn't list any of it um but yeah it is a little it's a little ridiculous, but at the same time, it's very different skills and like what you're trying to do. Cause like a Poshmark seller is very different from an Amazon seller, from a whatnot seller. Um, but I think Amazon and Walmart are probably the easiest ones to make a full-time living on. I, I agree. This is like very kind of like besides the point, but since we were talking about whatnot, I yeah. saw this girl and she does whatnot to eBay. Like, you know how, like, you do eBay to Amazon? She does whatnot to eBay. Fascinating. I was like, this is just crazy. Like, you just. <laughs> I, was, I was considering. I, I I spent a good, like, 17 <laughs> minutes trying to do whatnot to Amazon. But I was just like, man, how the heck am I going to find the right auction where they're actually, like, auctioning the right stuff and, like. I have to look it up like within the 15 seconds that they put it on the screen. And most of these people have used items and I don't know. <laughs> Here's the new dead stock brother printer or whatever. <laughs> You're like, yes. <laughs> oh, they're auctioning the $700 brother printer. Oh, it's at 50 bucks. Heck yeah. We like that. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah, it's like, how are we going to like, it's it's so not leveraged of a search like how do i search because like i know very specifically and you know pretty specifically like what you're looking for when you're searching ebay right. to sell on amazon but like i don't know what am i gonna do like go to the electronics auction and like they're just gonna have like be like yep i found the casio ms I'm like cool i'm gated yeah i think the ease of purchase is definitely one of the problems Right. And then it's like time. Sense. It's like eBay auctions, but like a very worse. Yeah, you can't even search for what you want. Right. eBay auction that you can't search for. So it's kind of. But it's cheaper once you find something. Probably. I don't know. Like we're kind of we're kind of 
like deep well, far end. So I, I sort yeah. of want to give some gems for the, you know, if they're watching this one, they're for eBay to Amazon. Um, have you ever bought from pawn shops websites before? Like the, not the eBay site, but the pawn shop website. Correct. Like I, I no noticed with eBay to Amazon, you'll buy from like actual pawn shops that sell on Amazon. Yep. And then like some of them have online websites where you can just go to their website and be like, Hey man, I'll buy all these for like 40 bucks and they'll, it will work. You know, That's a great idea. I um, don't think I've actually done that. Uh, okay. I've purchased a couple of things from pawn shop websites, but I haven't made a big practice of it. And honestly, okay. like if you go to their site, they're not going to have to pay eBay fees, uh, which right. they like that. They do like that. We do it, like that because that means we get a better price. That's, that's a lot. So like before we hopped on the call, you started talking about yeah some, some kind of real estate investment. Um, what can, yeah. can you tell more about that? So, yeah. So honestly, I'm still in the learning phase as well. But um, basically, I'm wanting to diversify even more and like understand how to flip houses um as well because like i've thought about this a lot like i would love to just buy an item for like 11 grand <laughs> on ebay and sell it for like 20 grand or like 30 grand or something like that sounds great um i love my high asp stuff but like there's not really tons of items that have good demand on amazon as far as i know i mean if you know these items uh, you should probably keep it to yourself honestly but uh my DMs are open, but uh, I mean, real estate, like houses sell all the time, land sells all the time. Um, obviously it has to be the right stuff and for the right price and stuff, but um, I'm learning about tax lien and tax deed investing. Um, and there's, each state has different rules around it. It's, it's relatively complicated, uh, which is honestly great because of the barrier to entry. Like, I spent like seven hours deciding like what strategy I'm going to do. So uh, yeah. and that was after a lot of research beforehand. So I'm going to give that a shot. Um, kind of like spending less time on my Amazon, putting a little bit more time into this. Yeah. I, I don't think Amazon at this point, like I need to be spending 30 hours a week on my Amazon. Like, I think, I think it's fine. Like let's learn something. <laughs> Yeah, like we'll just kind of keep yeah i'm i think that's the most logical step right seth because it's like it's just bigger thing right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> like you're, you're flipping buying for 20 selling for 50 buying for 50 selling for 100 right just these items over and over and over again all day long but with that you know you could buy land for four four thousand dollars and sell it for eight thousand and then make four grand <laughs> yeah so yeah, just, that could be, that's like a small flip sometimes too. Like you can, you can make more too. And I, the cool thing that like land actually is probably a great way to get into it. Cause it is like lower dollar. Like you said, like, like you yeah. don't have to buy a single family home, like a nice single family home for 200 grand. Like <laughs> land has value too. Not to get too sweaty about the real estate, but I didn't really know with land, it's hard to get financing for it. So a lot of the time you need some type of cash from my understanding. Like I'm not really a real estate expert, but that's why some of these land flippers do very well. Um, from what I've seen is because you actually like need the cash to buy it. And then, hmm. have, you know, with the house, you can get a conventional mortgage, but say 5% down and then a 200 K house front 10 grand, but on a 20 K piece of land, you can't really get a mortgage on that from my understanding. That's so you need a front 20, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's great to know. Cause yeah. Anything to make it like less competitive. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's like, I think for a long time, like a lot of Amazon sellers talked about like, Oh, I want to get into real estate after this. Um, and oftentimes it felt like their businesses weren't doing well. And so I was just like, oh, that's dumb. Like, you're not like focusing enough on Amazon. And then they like, they, they have that mindset and then they go like super deep into like, I'm going to do like 
four percent down on something and then like rent it out and i'm gonna f eight like a first time homeowner what 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 is it even called i don't even know fha uh, fha the, this is bad that i don't even know this but i'm not planning on doing this which I, I mean like you're just gonna i don't know like i know some of the terms i know some of the i was like oh yeah you're in a lean state <laughs> like i know you're in a lean state like there's oh, just no, freaking things. sucks <laughs> that? i i'm just like i'm i'm kind of i'm salty that my state isn't the type of investing i want to do well you can um, I, I can yeah yeah you can buy a for the people that have no idea like you can buy a tax lien uh, i'm not going to get into it everything about it but you could buy it like he's in a lien state so if you bought a lien um and then the person didn't pay back the lien then you could still get the property yeah so, so that happens you just need a lot of liens like you probably need to buy for every 10 liens you might get one property yeah i i would love it if it was that i i wish i knew the percentage that would be such an interesting percentage to know for sure because that would in, inform be investing so so much i don't know if it's like one percent i don't know if it's 20 percent of people don't redeem if it was if it was even 10 percent, i would be willing to do tax liens in colorado i think um i know somebody that did do liens in colorado and they bought 10 pieces of land and then one didn't damn <laughs> one didn't pay back and then basically he got the land but that's like cheap land parcels if it's something like, say, a $200,000 house, they're yeah. probably going to pay back the lien. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So for people who don't, people probably have no clue what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know, right? So, um, so basically, uh, there are tax liens and there are tax deeds. Tax. Okay. So this whole, this whole situation is because of property taxes. When you have a property, you need to pay your property taxes. Um, if you don't, the government has different ways of getting their property taxes. Um, and so depending on the state, there's different rules. A tax lien is basically the government saying, investors, like, we will give you 14% uh, to pay this property tax uh, for us so that we can continue paying teachers and uh, police people and firefighters and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and when the property owner pays back the taxes, they also have to pay back that 14%. So the investor gets 14%. Um, there's just tons of different rules. Um, but then if they don't pay back, you get the property. Um, yep. And so there's different amounts of time per state, like Colorado, it's like three years, I think. Um, other states is a year, other states is two years. And then there's also tax deeds where they just start an auction from the, uh, like the tax is owed and then people just bid up and you get the property at that point. So there's, that's, that's just the basics of it. There's a lot more to explain, but. Uh, yeah. it, it's kind of complicated because there's the lien and the deed states, like in your state, you could get a lien. And then I don't even know the, the time period if they don't pay it for, let's say a year, two years, you might get the property while a state like my state, I'm in Florida. If, uh, well, there, there's a lot to it. It's technically kind of mixed, but pretty much my state is a deed state. So once the, the property goes to like a deed auction, once you win the auction, you win the deed, which is so everybody like they want to people say they want to own real estate and they don't like really know what that means. Um, I've, I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure it out too, right? So people say, mm -hmm. oh, they're going to own real estate. When you're on real estate, what you're really owning is the deed to the property. If you don't own the deed, then you don't really own the real estate. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. I'm not trying to act like I know more than other people, but it's just kind of what I've learned. Um, yeah, or like if you have a tenant, you're trying to have the tenant pay down more of the mortgage so that you eventually have 20% of the property or 40% of the property or 60% of the equity in, in the, the house. Um, you know, it's the appreciation. What, what I know this is getting kind of like really sweaty in the real estate thing, but uh, uh, the thing that I didn't really realize is for like, for things to go to these deed and lien auctions for anybody that wants to go down this rabbit hole, right? It's a rabbit hole. It's, it's <laughs> so you could spend so much time into it, but basically 
from what I learned, uh, there's not really too much that goes to lean and deed auctions. And if it does, it's probably a pretty like least desire, like not as desirable. Uh, but there are definitely some come up stories. Like there was this guy and like he got a property for really like a thousand bucks and then he was able to sell it for 10,000 or 20,000. Like those stories do exist. Um, but you have to sift through a lot of stuff. Um, the other thing that people don't really realize about liens and deeds, and I didn't really understand this either is like, say when somebody has a mortgage on a house, uh, you know, you have the mortgage and none of this is financial advice or anything like that. Like I'm just beginning to this. I'm just gonna <laughs> show you guys the basics. But basically, yeah. somebody has a mortgage, they don't pay their mortgage, their house usually gets foreclosed on by the bank, right? Uh, the bank could choose not to foreclose on them. And then uh, there, I'm sure there's some other steps in there, but pretty much from there, it could go to like a, uh, it, it could also have a tax lien on it too, because they're not paying the property tax. And the bank could choose to foreclose or not foreclose or not take the property for some reason, but that's very rare. And that's kind of where I see these like, People that they say they bought this house for a thousand bucks and then they sold it for 20 grand. It's because the bank didn't really foreclose and they thought, because the, the the banks are in the money business. They're not in like the, <laughs> they don't want a house. It's like um, how we as Amazon sellers, like we want money in our bank account. We don't really care about the inventory. Like we care about the inventory, but like we want money in our bank account more, right? Means to an end. Right. It's a means to an end. It's the same thing kind of with banks. They want, they want like, they want stuff that makes them money and they don't want to have somebody's house. That's just something that it's like, okay, now we got to sell this. Like it's a real pain. That's why if somebody buys a foreclosure house, you're actually really helping out the bank because they don't want that. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the counties too, with the, the tax stuff. Correct. Like, they just want the taxes paid. Yeah. I like, I think that's the really cool thing about that thing, Seth, is like we're actually providing a service and we're fixing somebody's problem because they have this problem because banks, you know, say if you buy a foreclosure house, banks don't want the foreclosure house. So then you solve their problem. Same thing with the liens. It's like, hey, there's these back taxes owed. Hey, Seth, you want you want to get 15 percent return on your money a year? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, sure. Yeah. You know, uh, that exchange happens. And then usually the person pays their taxes because they don't want Seth to take their property. But like, if they Seth don't, the then property. Seth might come up on, you know, whatever it is, right? Whatever property it is. Yeah. I actually heard of a, a story of somebody in Arizona. They bought a, uh, a tax lien on a property. It was a condo. They paid $11,000 for the tax lien. They waited three years. The person never paid. And um, they eventually got the property. They decided to rent it out for a year, made their $11,000 back, and then sold it for $169,000. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But the thing is, is like that was over the course of four years. But right. Like, but like that's that's a that's a lot of money but then that's over the course of four years um and that's like kind of a lot of mental space but at the same time a lot of people aren't worth a hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars like net worth at all so it's like was that fast or was that slow like like if you could increase your net worth by one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars for an eleven thousand dollar investment over four years like i think most people should do that right I think yeah. the problem is a lot of people don't have the 11K. And that's where Amazon comes in. Like, you get the money from Amazon. Mm -hmm. And, like, we're saying all this, Seth. I guess I should have kind of addressed it. Like, and you you were talking about it earlier where, you know, they're not doing good at Amazon. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna do this other thing. Like, like, what makes you think you're going to succeed? <laughs> I know, right? Like, you're at the point in your Amazon business where you're taking out money consistently, correct? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So yeah. if they're not at a point where they're able to withdraw, say like 4k a month from their Amazon business, they probably shouldn't be doing this other stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prob probably beyond that too. Yeah. I mean, they can do whatever, you know, you can do whatever you want, man. You can do whatever you want. Right. Yeah. But it's kind of like, this is a really good thing that makes money, but 
there's definitely a lot of risk to it. I feel like with the real estate stuff, it seems like there's not as much risk. Yeah, there are a lot of like, there's there's just a lot of random things to keep in mind. But I, like, I know that's kind of super broad, but I, I guess specifically with like the lean and deed investing, because you're getting it for like, I would imagine unless it got bid up at auction, <clears throat> You're buying it for like below market or at market value. Unless it gets super bid up, then you would be, you know, buying above market. But if people are bidding up, there's probably a good chance that like there's a reason why they're bidding up, right? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's, it's kind of just like um, we could just compare it to eBay to Amazon and specifically even with the auctions. Like, let's say you're you're bidding auctions on eBay to sell on Amazon. Like, in both cases, you're going to want to take a look at, like, what pr price are you planning on selling at? And, like, what are the fees? What are all the different costs that come to selling with it? So, like, we're not going to, like, pay Amazon market value on eBay. Like, we have a maximum bid if we stop there. Like, whether we want 30% ROI, 50% ROI, 70% ROI, like whatever it is, like we have criteria and we stick to that. Um, so, but then it, if people are bidding up to market value, potentially the market value, there's something there that makes it higher than market value. And so that's where research comes in, Correct. Uh, which I need to do lots more of before I'm actually good at, because I actually haven't even bought anything yet, but I'm doing tons of research right now. So <laughs> sad. I know, like, I know all the stuff we talked about before. I haven't even bought. It's like watching all these Amazon videos and then not even selling one item. Yeah, but the thing is, it's it's weird though with real estate. It's like I do feel like with Amazon, I feel like you should just like watch a video or two, start your Amazon seller account, watch another like ten videos, and then start buying stuff. Like, I think that's an acceptable amount of time to research um that balances like actually learning something and like actually getting started but like if you're gonna go and like spend like 15k at a an auction for real estate um and like what if you buy something that like the person actually owed like another like six thousand in taxes and that's connected to the property but you didn't know how to research that right and you s jumped in too quick because you didn't do the research or understand that that was a like a, a problem that you need to look for so it's like it does require a bit more research i think <laughs> there was this uh there was this auction that this guy went to and yeah. and uh it was a deed auction and basically he, he went to this auction and he's like oh yeah like i'm gonna get a property today right but he didn't go and check the property beforehand that had the that was at auction yeah. and they were bidding it up, bidding it up, bidding it up. They paid like 200 K for this house. And then the other guy was bidding him up and he, and that was like his competition. He was like, Oh man, 200 K. I got this house for 200 K. You know, he thought it was 400 K, 500 K. And yeah. then I was like, he like smiled. He like looked at the guy and he's like, good luck, buddy. And apparently that dude that was bidding, bidding up. Right. Uh, or making the other guy bid up. Hopefully, hopefully you fall. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was a trick. It was he a trap. Went, right. He went to that property like a few nights before and did his research. The entire property was flooded, and then it got frozen. <laughs> so it had to get completely demolished, and the land was maybe worth five k. So that guy lost like a hundred and fifty k at least. Why? Why was the other guy bidding him up? Just like, haha, gotcha. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like pure it's evil. <laughs> well, at a local auction, because some of the in some of the states it's a local deed auction, you want to take out your competition, like not oh, to be yeah. an ass, but like it's either you let him spend all of his money on this one property and lose all of his money, or he's going to eat your tax deeds on the next auction. Yeah, fair enough. So. I mean, it is what it is, but the guy didn't do his due diligence. So, <laughs> yeah. goodness, yeah, I, mean, that's I would hate to see that happen, but I understand. You know, was wow. that? Yeah, that is like, 
And that's like higher ticket too. Like I think, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, at the point that like I'm spending 200 K on a property, like I hope I know how to do, do like due diligence in a better way than that <laughs> or else I won't get to that point. <laughs> I know. I think that's where like you kind of start smaller, right? Like you start at like maybe land, like, you know, 3k land, right? Land that's like 3k or grand. I Like I agree with what you said, Seth, where it's like, oh yeah, if you watch some videos, just like buy some products on Amazon, start trying to sell it and like figure it out from there. I feel like real estate might be the same way, but the problem is you need more money and then not always, but like in general, you kind of need more money. And then, um, I think failing on like smaller properties might be the play, but I don't know. I, I haven't bought anything yet. You know, you're probably like high ROI, low dollar properties, kind of like the books of Amazon. Like if you just buy a, bu a book for a dollar and you're aiming to sell it for $10 profit, but it only sells for $6 profit, like you succeeded and you learned, you know, like that might be the play. Like I just see Seth as like the point of like, hey, I'm taking 5K out of my Amazon business a month. Let's say that's like not for personal living expenses. That's just like. That's just for DoorDash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like your fun money, right? Yeah. <laughs> or like you have 5K in like top cash back or whatever because you've been running up OA or whatever it is, right? You just kind of take that 5K and you're like, okay, I'm going to just like throw spaghetti at the wall here and kind of see what happens. You know, maybe I buy something that's worth nothing. Maybe I buy something that's worth a lot of money, but at least you learn a little bit. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you feel like that might be the play I'm trying to figure it out myself. I'm like, Oh, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to think about like, do you even like, do you want to do this? Like, is that even the path for you? Um, but yeah, like if you, if it is the path for you or for me, like, at some point, like I do need to actually get started and buy stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> obviously, um, not risk everything. Like, let's say I had 150k. Like, I should not be planning on bidding 150k on anything because, like, I don't know what I know at this point. Like, I really don't. Um, yeah. So, um, try to try to buy higher ROI, like bigger cushion stuff and just like be willing to go to several auctions before I get anything potentially. Um, I think that'll be a, a good thing long-term. And then even if I sell something for a loss, like I think it'll be good to go through the process of like, okay, I bought a property like out of state. I worked with a real estate agent and I actually sold this thing. Like I know what the process is like. I know generally how long it takes me. Cause that's another thing I've been thinking about, like, okay, like, cool. Like, let's say I make 10 K on a flip, like between like doing due diligence on several auctions on all the properties, by the time I actually get something, by the time I like go locksmith and like get my key, like go like deal with all this stuff that I'll have to deal with in selling. <laughs> I, it's just a random thing to say, but uh, <laughs> I know. just, just what's that? I said 99 lock picking. <laughs> 99 thieving. <laughs> thieving, yeah, there you go. Yeah, lock picking. Um, <laughs> by the time I do all that, like if I've spent like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what amount of hours is unacceptable, but like you should be thinking about like, okay, I spent 32 hours on this deal and I made $3,000. Like, is that good? Is that bad? Um, honestly, I think the math on that is like a hundred dollars an hour or something. But yeah. So some, what'd you say? Did I, I, I'm just going to do the math. So we got, we got the calculator. Oh, we got the calculator and whatnot. Okay. okay. I, I haven't shipped it yet. It's shipping on Monday. It's uh Friday right now. So, um, okay. So $3,000 divided by 32 hours, that's $93 an hour. Um, so you, you just got to be thinking about like, okay, if this takes, if this takes 80 hours and I made $800. Like that's a problem. <laughs> like you would have been better flipping burgers at McDonald's. Um, unless that's the learning the process so that next time it can take 40 hours and you make more money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it could be like um, Amazon. I wasn't profitable for, for six months. I know a lot of people yeah. weren't um, it's a good part point. like that, but I mean, it worked, it worked out. Right. Um, I don't know if, were you profitable in your first six months or no? Of Amazon? 
Yeah. Um, I think I well, I think I was profitable from an inventory lab standpoint, but not from a cash flow standpoint. Does that make I, sense? I, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Really invested in the inventory. Um, he was so, reinvesting profits back into inventory. <laughs> I'm be honest. I don't know if there's too much like room left on the recording time on Streamyard. Um, yeah. So <laughs> if uh, if you have anything to like kind of end it off with, what you think the people should know about basically what you're doing where you, you know, Amazon's good and everything, but you want to diversify. Um, I don't know if you want to end off with any like keynotes talking about that, but no, it was just good to come on your channel. I always love talking to Cody is fun. We've just been building our YouTube channels together over the last uh, little while and always fun. Glad I got to come on his channel. Um, social media is Cody flips. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Um, my social media is the checkmate flips that you should see in the little stream yard thing here. I'm on YouTube. And if you want to contact me, uh, I'm on Instagram. I respond to my messages, but yeah, good to hang out with you guys. Take yep. care for sure. Thanks for coming on Seth. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye guys.